All right, now for video uh, elimination homework number three. Get an alkyl iodide, a primary alkyl iodide, potassium t-butoxide and t-butanol at 80 degrees. So uh, you have to identify leaving group, you have to identify base or nucleophile, and you have to look at the temperature in the solvent. Uh, so give me the products, give me the mechanism. I'll, uh, I'll talk more about this after you're back. Okay, so again, compound with the leaving group, the iodide is a leaving group, that carbon is going to be the electrophilic carbon. I've said it has to be an elimination reaction, so you only have two uh, beta hydrogens on that CH2, right? So alpha carbon, beta carbon, two beta protons, do you have a strong base? That's going to probably be the big question for most of you in solving these problems. Do you have a, a strong base? Do you have a good nucleophile? If you do, once again, if you have a strong base, you can do E2. You'll have E2 over E1. If you have a good nucleophile, you'll do SN2 over SN1. And very often, good nucleophiles are strong bases and vice versa. Uh, so in this case, potassium T-butoxide plus minus. So we have potassium plus and T-butoxide. T-butoxide is, is a strong base. It's like hydroxide or methoxide or ethoxide. You see these O minuses where the oxygen, where the charge is not delocalized. You can't draw any resonance structures here. That's going to be a strong base. So you do have a strong base. I've said it's an elimination reaction, therefore it's going to be E2. In fact, though, so you might think, well, it's a strong base, and therefore it could be a good nucleophile, right? And in general, that's true. Uh, negatively charged oxygens with the charge localized on the oxygen that are, you know, so a strong base, methoxide, ethoxide, hydroxide, that oxygen will be a, a good nucleophile. T-butoxide's a little different. The steric bulk of that T-butyl group prevents it from being a good nucleophile. So potassium T-butoxide is really sort of special in that it's a strong base, but it's not terribly nucleophilic. And you'll see that a lot. A strong base that's got a lot of steric bulk around the basic atom will be uh, a strong base, but not terribly nucleophilic. So, not very nucleophilic. That's not to say it can't be a good nucleophile, or sorry, that it can't be a nucleophile. If you have a molecule that cannot undergo elimination, T-butoxide can be a, a, a nucleophile. But if elimination is possible, and it is here, because we have a couple of beta hydrogens, potassium T-butoxide will almost always do E2. The temperature is a bit of a hint as well. Higher temperature favors elimination. Really, you don't need to worry about the solvent at all. You've got a strong base, so you're gonna see an elimination. And so the mechanism is T-butoxide grabs one of these protons and in a concerted fashion kicks out iodide. Make sure you count the number of carbons correctly. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. Got to come up with five carbons over here. There you go. So a lot of times people will want to make, just kick off the iodide and make a double bond there and that actually adds a carbon. So be sure you're counting carbons correctly. So that's going to be our elimination product. There's only in fact one elimination product possible. This is not an isomer isomerizable double bond. Two hydrogens on the terminal carbon. So there's only one pair of beta hydrogens. That's the only alkene we can get. All right.